we're bringing the class leading content workflow engine um, rules engine that we've had for 25 years to that application builder experience. Being able to change applications quickly on the fly, I think that's really where we shine. You know, when we talk about that, the rapid application development tools and things like that, our, our unique take on it is using Microsoft Excel to lay out your data tables and the relationship between those data tables. All right, hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're back together with Mr. Shark Hunter himself, James Morrison <laughs> from Highland Software. Good morning, James, how you doing? Good morning. Great that you were able to attend today. I appreciate you taking the time in. And uh, we wanted to kind of pick up on our last discussion, which was centered around rapid application development. And there were like three main takeaways, if I recall from that conversation you and I had. Um, we talked about the need in the market for a low code um, application development platform, and that it can be used to cut down um, on the number of disconnected applications in IT sprawl. Um, then we talked about how OnBase, the OnBase platform could be used uh, to build um, applications that are connected um, on a single platform. And then you would introduce a concept that's I think relatively new, and that is called this application accelerator. Um, that's used in conjunction with App Builder, what used to be known as uh, Work View. And um, I think that was introduced in version 18. Is that correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we had uh, chatted a little bit about how it can really accelerate um, new application rollout for customers, yet everything that you build upon that is connected. It's connected to the documents, it's connected to workflow, it can be connected to the internet forms that you build inside of Unity. Um, inside your governance rules as a service, being able to handle the disposition of documents. Um, all of that is connected because of the platform approach that uh, OnBase has developed and architected for um, its customer base. So we wanted to pick up on that, on the uh, application accelerator experience, because we just we just hit it real lightly. And, and that's really a big differentiator for um, the App Builder platform and for OnBase. So maybe we could talk a little bit more about that in the session today. Does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. You know, Highland, we've been in the, the content management space, right, for the past 25 plus years in terms of where to put that content, um, what what happens to that, right? The rules engine, the workflow behind it. Once mm -hmm. once this happens, this exception gets kicked off, you know, what we're doing is we're combining all of that with that app building platform. And I think, you know, what other folks have been doing coming to the table as rapid application development platforms is that content's just an afterthought, you know, and really we're bringing the class leading content workflow engine um, rules engine that we've had for 25 years to that whole uh, application builder experience. Yeah. And, and being able to do that quickly and efficiently, um, being able to change applications quickly on the fly, I think that's really where we shine because, you know, what you might end up with in three years, five years from now might be drastically different from what you build today. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where we see things like access database solutions or SharePoint sites that, that people build to manage these processes really fall short because, um, you know, changing them is difficult. Yeah, so I was gonna walk through just a really quick deck to kind of tee up what this ACE file concept is, and then I'll show you live how it works. Um, I have a really good example that we can walk through. I, I have a, a detailed spreadsheet that a customer provided, and I, I basically scrubbed the customer data off of it, but we can show how we took that spreadsheet and built an application for that customer. Uh, because again, in this example, we'll show that customer was using a spreadsheet, um, email, and uh, inevitably, um, a content management system like OnBase to store the critical documents that they needed to store over time. So um, just interesting, really interesting use case and uh, we'll walk through it now. So, you know, a business application. Um, here's just an example of one that's built specific to manage contracts. Um, and you'll see there's a lot of things happening on this single screen and that's what we call that 360 view of, of everything that's happening. Uh, again, if I'm looking at a spreadsheet of just data, here's my contract information, it's really tough to track those notes, tasks, and even down below the documents. So again, the data all around that contract, um, I'll introduce the, the concept here. We have a concept called an external class where we can tie 
to data in a third party system. So if need be, um, we can reach out to those those ERPs or uh, maybe your vendor management system and pull all the, the existing data around your vendors. Then we have um, our task notes, documents, right? The, the place to catch all. Where would you put documents on a spreadsheet? Uh, where would you put a note that you spoke with this vendor and um, they're looking to redline that contract and have it over to you by the end of the week? Mm -hmm. um, those are some difficult things to keep track of on a spreadsheet. Um, and inevitably, if you do, you have, have notes columns that, um, you know, you're using wrap text and you've got this, this huge area of, of data where you're managing that. Um, you know, we're mapping documents to these solutions as well. So when we talk about that 25 plus years of, of content management experience, we can map folders to this, we can map specific document types to this, um, we can map forms to this application. So uh, we can have people interact with forms and have those forms then interact with our application. And an example in, in the one I'm looking at here would be something like a vendor interaction form. Highland Software internally uses this software to manage all of our contracts. And when we interact with a vendor, we can fill out a vendor scorecard and say, that was a really great interaction. It was very easy to work with this person. Or no, that wasn't so easy and, and you know, likely cost us money versus making money. And you know, maybe we should reevaluate when, when the time comes. So again, talking about the ability to interact um, and the, the form might kick off this process as well. I, I might sit at my desk and say, I need a contract filled out and kick off the entire process with a form. So um, inevitably documents and content are not an afterthought for us. They're always inherently going to be part of these applications. So then we, I want to introduce the concept of the ACE file. Um, you know, when we talk about that, the rapid application development tools and things like that, um, our, our unique take on it is using Microsoft Excel to lay out your data tables and the relationship between those data tables. Um, just a little backstory. This is Tyler. Tyler uh, created this tool. He was an intern at Highland at the time. Um, it is now, he's obviously now a full employee here, but um, our ability to take and, and map all of those things out using Excel. And this is essentially our, our application from top to bottom. So the example I'm going to provide today, we're going to go over a probate, uh, a probate course, uh, I'm sorry, a probate case settlement. So when someone passes away, how uh, city and county government manages closing that person's estate? Well, most customers I'm finding are using something like a spreadsheet or a spreadsheet and access database or um, a SharePoint site along with um, you know a shared drive somewhere that's storing the content. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that just as our example today. So in that, we've got our application itself, which would be our, our probate case management. The classes within that would be like descendant information, um, assets that that person has, um, current creditors that, that are currently pushing against that person's estate. Um, so our ability to track all those moving parts and then the attributes within those classes or tables of data are things like, um, okay, descendant information. Okay, descendant name, descendant date of birth, um, date of death, address, city, state, zip. Basically all that information um, that you might think of today as keywords on documents. Uh, in the on-base realm, a keyword can map to an attribute, an attribute can map to a keyword. The unique part is those attributes can can really be used across applications as well. Okay. The filters of data. So the last three pieces at the bottom here are filters of data are really the pre-confined constraints that we can put around that. So, um, you know, show me, uh, and those filters can also be search filters. So let me search for people who have passed away in the past you know, year. Um, and you can maybe search by last name or date of death. Um, maybe you're gonna show and present, sorry, this is such a morbid example too. I never really thought about that. <laughs> the, um, the filters, you know, but again, your ability to parse out maybe the tasks that are assigned to me. Um, our ability to build filters are truly an enterprise vision. And what I mean by that is, Using something like percent %n, which would point to the current username logged in, you can create a filter that says my tasks, and that's applicable to every person that works at your organization, because if it's pointing to their username, it's going to reflect in that filter. Different views of data. So, uh, you know, a view is essentially that specific, what we're going to do with that data, how we're going to lay all that out. So I just showed you a view within contract management. Um, we have different views where we can present um, 
you know, that data in certain ways. So maybe as the probate case manager, you're going to see everything, but you're going to create a specific attorney view where they only can see a, a few pieces of data within that screen. So views can be specific to your user group or, or your role within the application. And then the mappings, I really, I, I just talked about that when I talked about mapping forms, folders, documents, all to our application on the back end. Well, the unique part is the ACE file tool covers essentially five of the six main, main building components of this, this tool here. So here's an example. Um, and again, this is just a screenshot of, of a separate ACE file, but I'll show you the ACE file that we're referring to. But the layout of the ACE file is the important part I was trying to highlight here. First, we lay out our classes of data. So if, you're ever, if you've ever built something like an access database, you can think of these as your tables, right? These are my tables of data. And within those tables, I have attributes. Um, within those attributes, we're able to specify what is the attribute type, you know, the data type, what class does it relate to, um, what's the length of that, what's the data set behind that, and then we can even specify our filters and our views um, on some further columns to the right-hand side there. So being able to specify all of this, this data and the relationships on the front end provides a huge time savings, even over our traditional building methodology. And just to take a step back, if you, if you could think about how you would have to wire together a relational database, because um, that's essentially what this is. You start at the core tables of data that have no relationships, right? So we would start with what are our core pieces, you know, the, the things um, that we're trying to capture, because then what you need to do is then you need to build out, build out your sub tables and then wire the relationships back. If you look on my screen here, under my data types, I've got integers, alphanumeric data types. I can do Boolean. Um, I can do text fields, formatted text fields, currency, date, date and time. But some of these you'll see are relationships. And my advisor, you know, under my student information, I'm going to look at my student student info, and I've, I know my my advisor right there when I'm looking at that student data. Well, that advisor is a separate table of data where we're going to manage all that advisor's information. Hmm. Um, same thing with our school and our program. So being able to wire the relationships up in the Excel format, right? Every human who's touched a computer since I think the year 2000 is familiar with Microsoft Excel. You know, being able to lay out those tables of data and, and put it all together, and even, again, your data sets. It seems like a, a simple thing to do, but even with our in, within our tool, um, if you were to build the traditional methodology, you would specify, you would build each one of these attributes essentially one at a time with their data sets. So being able to do this all on the front end, um, even within our own tool, we think it's anywhere between a 5x and a 10x time savings. That's right, 10 times wow. um, the time savings. And uh, and I can tell you, you know, this year uh, we've done these WorkView workshops or app builder workshops where we come on site with a customer and we are able to turn something around in a four to six hour period and this is the tool behind the magic. This is the only way we're able to do something like that because in the past I would sit and show up and we might we might build you know three classes and wire one relationship together just to show how it all works. But what we're able to do now is build the, the foundation for that customer to build on going forward, including all the tables of data and all the relationships. So just a question, if we can take a break here for a second yeah. and, and dissect this um, Excel document a little bit. <clears throat> How much time is spent doing this part? Because this, this seems to be really important, right? I mean, if you don't get this right, everything else downstream is going to be a bit problematic, right? So how much time does a do, do you and a customer spend putting this piece together? You know, well, two two comments there. You're absolutely right. You know, if you get this wrong, um, you might have some problems in, down the road. Uh, now, the flip side is once you pull in an ACE file and get maybe the core of your tables and relationships, you can absolutely go back and add maybe additional tables or attributes, things like that. So when we talk about flexibility going forward, that that's where our tool shines. Um, mm -hmm. I personally have built access databases in my previous career. And I could tell you, you know, when a customer or, or someone from a business unit would come to me with a big problem, it would sometimes be easier for me to start with a new database than to go in and change you know, what they had screwed up. Yeah. And that I think speaks to um, 
that that speaks to our ability to, to to change with the future or change with future needs as businesses change. You know, especially things like regulatory compliance, um, government customers, public sector. You know, so much of what they do on a day to day basis is based on litigation and and uh, legislative changes. So, you know, being able to to change rapidly is super important. <laughs> to answer your question in the short answer, we might spend anywhere between um, one to three hours ensuring all of this is correct. Um, we can even pull it in once and we'll look at it and say, does this look good? Um, and they'll say, oh, wait, you know, uh, one thing that's not on my spreadsheet today, but I use this other system to track, I wonder if it could be included. That's the times when we'll go, yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll bounce back rewind and maybe add an additional class to this and um, as we go through that discovery process. So again, much faster. You can build, even if you're sitting, if you're a, a business development manager, if you're an application development manager, and it's your job to manage all of those things within um, you know, your organization, you can turn around and show someone, if they're using a spreadsheet today, you can build a proof of concept you know, in a day and say, would it make more sense for me to use this or for you to use this tool instead of your spreadsheet, I can lock down things like data sets and, and drop downs and uh, make it very easy to uh, you know, drive from start to finish to get something done. So yeah, easier to use than, than the OnBase Studio interface. I mean, OnBase Studio is all point and click configuration, but like I mentioned, you're gonna go in there and create every single class one at a time, and then you're gonna add those attributes. Essentially, you can add multiple attributes at once, but the data sets and things like that all need to be done one at a time. But I think the point being here with the Excel spreadsheet is if, if you could go into OnBase Studio, if you don't have something similar to the Excel spreadsheet that you've built, which kind of lays out the plan that you would use to implement your app inside Studio, you're going to have a hard time trying to do that with Studio because there's there's so much you can do in there. I mean, you could get a bit overwhelmed, right? So the idea of, you know, hey, before I get into studio, let me think through this in terms of how this all needs to work and interoperate together. Um, th that Excel exercise kind of, um, I, I guess, helps the, the, the user, the designer of the app um, before they even get into studio to actually go and execute anything. Would that be correct? Absolutely, yeah, and we'll even take a step back and we'll whiteboard and just say, before we even get into the spreadsheet, what are the classes? What are the big things that relate to each other? Um, you know, and those are the things that we'll whiteboard out and then we'll kind of wire it together with some some uh, wireframe technique and, and that's when we'll start to, to build the relationships, figure out those core classes. Um, and in the past, you had to do that because you had to figure out what doesn't have those other relationships because that's where I have to start. Mm -hmm. But now, um, you know, you lay out what are the big things that we want to capture. Then we start laying it out in Excel and it makes it nice and easy to kind of figure out what those relationships are. And, and, um, and again, even the examples I've provided so far are pretty simple. We have some cases that we have advanced associations between relationships where it might be something like contract X relationship to vendor X relationship to invoices, where we're going to build that story of how much does this contract actually cost you uh, to do that? We're pulling from multiple tables of data, three tables to, to get that relational database. The other really cool part about this tool is that you don't have to build these ACE files from scratch. Um, obviously, it's a fantastic tool for use cases like I'm going to show you where someone is presenting we, me with an Excel file and I'm going to build that. Um, the flip side is you might not know where you want to start. You might want to just start with a blanket application. And here's some examples of those that we have available. So we've got a basic case, uh, not to drop a rhyme, a case ACE file, uh, mm -hmm. where we've got the case, case type, case subtype. And just to highlight that, um, that is one that our services team came to us and said, right, the, the term that's been used in the industry for years is case management, right? Mm -hmm. We're managing cases. Um, that term resonates for some organizations and some industries, others not so much. Um, you might think, you know, uh, I don't manage cases. Well, that incident management is a case. That student advising request is a case. Anything that's not such a linear process, we just bucket into this case. Well, if you look at those terms down the left-hand side, if you were to pull out the word case and plug in contract, tell me that you don't have a contract tracking application right away. 
right. now we have contract, contract type, contract subtype. Um, yeah. Entity might change to vendor. Uh, who's the internal user assigned? And now you can track your contracts in this multi-layered application versus that flat spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can use the same example like uh, for, and everybody has this, right? Internally, a ticketing system, some sort of support system, right? The help desk or whatever you want to call it. Um, that that could be the case is a ticket number, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, that that is exactly right. Ticketing, um, incident management. Hey, this mm -hmm. happened. This we need to do something. Um, issue resolution, software and solution tracking. You know, if you walk into an organization, um, just to take a step back, the state uh, Deloitte just did a study on the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and the state of Texas is using over 7,000 applications across all state departments. Wow. Um, and keep in mind, it costs them, uh, I think, $4 million to even get to that number, to do the analysis to get to that number. So let me just stop. I mean, think about your organization. If I were to ask you, how many applications do you use internally? How many solutions do you use? Mm -hmm. A lot of customers have a hard time answering that. Yeah. And in this case, um, Again, the term case management doesn't really resonate there, but that is what we're managing. The, the What is the solution? What's the solution type, the departments who use it? And then what is even the licensing that supports that solution? Mm -hmm. um, so being able to track all of those internally. So you know, if your organization wants to cut licensing or consolidate or maybe um, you know, revoke some things, figure out what it's going to affect down the chain. And then that student advising, those are just three examples of ACE files that we have available. We have a lot more that are out on the application builder community. Um, so if you're an existing Highland customer, just note, you can visit us at the application builder community or send us an email anytime at abc at highland.com. So with that, I'm gonna flip over to the actual demo itself. Yeah, so for customers that are on OnBase 18 or higher, they'll find this little button in OnBase Studio. And again, if, if you've never seen OnBase Studio, if you're not a Highland customer, this is essentially where we build apps. This is where we would build things like workflows. Um, this is where we build our applications. And you'll notice I would build my workflows right next to my application. So this is essentially where I build my data side of the house, the, the screens, the views. And to the left here is where I would build the rules engine. You know, what happens at this step when, when this status equals closed, you know, do this. That's where we would build that type of logic into our app. And then you'll find here up at the top right hand side, we've, we've got this application creation accelerator button. Mm -hmm. And I'll click this generate ACE template just to show. Um, and then we'll open this up. And what this is going to do is this is going to generate the format that you would need to lay out your data in. Wow. So here you'll see the display name, data type, related class, all those fields that I was talking about. Um, we give three just little tabs with example classes. And on this notes and example class, you can see the different data types, um, data sets that we're putting in here. You know, you could set a default value. Uh, but this is essentially what you can export and build on right out of Studio. Okay. if you don't have the template yet. So once I have that template and I'm sitting here with a customer and this is an example of what that customer provided to me. So this is their live spreadsheet that they use for tracking um, that probate court case or I'm sorry, probate case management where, um, you know, here we have the descendant information. So here's my tables of data. I've got my descendant info, my creditor, the property that that individual owned, the inventory on that property. Um, and then we've got this final accounting and final distribution. And really all these are doing is calculations. So hmm. the unique part, again, as you look at these spreadsheets, I was actually able to get rid of this final accounting and final distribution report because those are things we can do from Highland's application nat uh, natively without having to do these calculations. I can have maybe a workflow button that says, create final accounting summary and we'll produce a PDF document that looks a lot better than this that will add and, and do all these things for me on the back end. Well, so, and I would imagine too, you can control uh, and have consistency in the generation of those final outputs. Whereas if you're giving people a manual spreadsheet to do that in, that, that, that's not necessarily the case, correct? That's exactly right. 
Yeah. So this is essentially the ACE file that I built using that Excel document we were just looking at. So here I've got my different tables of data at the bottom. I've got case information uh, with all those, the, here, let me scroll over just a little, with all the information they were capturing, the data type, I'm uh, putting data sets in here. Um, we've created some filters along with some views that, that apply to these. We've got our property list. And again, all the data sets behind that, the different types of property, um, you know, the possible family and errors, the inventory, the creditor. We created a separate class for status so we can maintain this data set separately. Um, and then I've even added some additional classes like notes and tasks that they didn't have on their application. So our ability to assign a task to someone internally um, along with the due date, along with a priority. So, hey, I need you to do some work for me on this particular case or incident because it needs closed this week. Um, you know, and that type of follow-up along with, again, notes uh, relating back to the case information and all of that, that data. Basically, once we laid this out, um, the next step was essentially taking this and pulling it into OnBase Studio using that, that same button, that application so, creation accelerator. So before you go ahead and do that, <clears throat> Who, who specifically did you work with um, <clears throat> in the customer to get that spreadsheet laid out the way you did? Who, who, who was involved in that? How many people were part of that process? Yeah, Just so curiosity. Yeah, there, there was, I think, three individuals in the room that all basically manage that process internally. Mm -hmm. They're all essentially the, the, the same level. I, I truly employ you, if you're going to build an app, try to get down to that ground level, the nitty gritty, the people who are doing it, because those are the folks where once you think you have it right, they'll say, well, no, I actually have this other piece of data that I pull from this other application called my case. It's this online hosted application that all of our attorneys use to track these cases. And that's mm -hmm. where some light bulbs go off and they say, wait, maybe the attorneys can get rid of my case by just leveraging this tool. So those are areas where it really helps to, to get with those folks to, who, who do the day-to-day, -day, who are actually entering this information and touching that data. So yeah, right within OnBase, we would click our Application Creation Accelerator button, click this Import button. I can browse out to my desktop and grab our probate tracking app. Now, just note, um, let me go ahead and actually cancel this. And we're going to do something just to show the error handling capabilities of this tool. So let's just say you're sitting here, you're laying out all of your data, and you made an error. Okay. Well, the unique part is we're going to really help you along the way here because rather than saying, you know, the data is, you know, not right or you're, you're – Excel files corrupt, like a lot of those other tools might show, we're actually going to highlight exactly where you can find that error. So I just showed how we would pull it in seamlessly with no errors. Well, I just added that error. It's telling me on sheet inventory, row nine, the specified related class does not exist. That's because we, we put that A in the back end. Um, so we'll go ahead and just remove that A. So again, if you have a spelling error or any type of relationship error in your tables, it'll show that for you. These two buttons at the bottom, you know, they're so little, it's really easy to minimize them, but these are incredibly powerful. So what these are is this is automatically creating a filter for each class that you import and automatically creating a view for each class that you import. Well, on my actual data table, I've already specified. Under each one of these, I have a bunch of filters specified. I have the views specified. So I don't need those today. However, if you were sitting with a customer and just wanted to show a proof of concept or whip something up quickly, what that is showing you is that if you did nothing more than collect these first lines of data, these first, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rows of data, Display name, the data type, the related class, the length, the description, the data set, and the default value. You could essentially ignore the rest of this and just click mm -hmm. those two buttons and say automatically create my, my filter. And it will create you a filter that says all probate cases. Um, it would actually say all case information. Okay. Um, it will just highlight to whatever your class name is. Um, 
Same thing with this, it would say all property list. Um, so essentially, if you did nothing more than collect those first seven table or seven columns, you can click these two buttons and automatically create filters and views for your application. Hmm. But again, I've already specified that, so we're just gonna go next. Here's where you would control who has access to your app. And then that's essentially it. So when I click this finish button, OnBase might take anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds. And on the back end, it is building everything on the back end for me. And again, it's already done the error handling. So I know everything's coming in correctly. It's coming in with the right relationships, the right columns, the right you know, naming conventions, data sets, all of that's happening on the back end. And then, and I'll show too. So this is the way we build now going forward. We start in Excel, we get the data tables laid out and we pull it in. I'm going to show you how we would build in the past just to show how, how powerful this is. So let's say I'm going to create a class from scratch. Okay. I would right click, I would come in here, I would create new class. And again, this class is essentially the same exact thing as this table of data. So if I wanted to repeat this case information class along with all this, these different attributes and, and data sets, I would essentially come in here just like we're showing I would go new class, standard class, I'll just call it case info for short. And then the next step would be to add all of those attributes. So I would come here, add multiple attributes, and there's here's what we would do. Um, this would be like the name, the date of the birth. Standard name, it's date of birth, specific. date of death, and again, here's where we would yeah. specify the data type just to show all the different data types that we can collect. Okay. So, yeah, again, it's, the I mean, real advantage. A lot, more, a lot more tedious, although. Right, and if you have something like status that has a data set, you can double click or, or click this advanced button. And here's where we would specify that data set. And then I get, again, a lot of clicks here. I gotta go to new data set, um, <clears throat> we'll call it status. And maybe this is open. Um, closed and pending. Mm -hmm. But again, having to do that for every single attribute that has a data set. Um, so again, you could see why, and, and again, that's just one advantage. This is just building the class and the data tables. All the other pieces, you know, building your filters out, you would have to right click mm -hmm. in here, create a new filter, well, we're doing all of that right on the front end of this for you. So here, let me just delete this test class that we created. And let's open up a class that we pulled into our application. So here's our case info. Here's all the information we pulled in with the data sets. Um, here's our filter that we created. And again, this is just a filter showing all probate cases. Mm -hmm. Here's another advantage that we don't really talk about much, but once you have a filter created, like the app, like that Excel file automatically created my filter for me, now adding new filters is really easy. I can right click and go duplicate filter and maybe call this search cases. And that's where we can provide some areas for that person to enter some user prompts. So maybe they're gonna search by uh, the name of that descendant or the date of death or the date of birth. Um, so that's gonna present search filters for that individual. So building this out from that, that Excel document is incredibly simple. Here's an example of the view that it creates for me. And I'll just preempt this by saying, I don't expect this to be pretty, but a fantastic starting point. Right, so there's my descendant information, all the tables of data that we wanna collect on that person. So again, using some basic tools here, I personally don't like 100 width, it makes the screen look a little pinched, so maybe we'll go 90 width, and then we'll start moving some things around. Um, maybe you wanted to add, so here's my toolbox over here on the left-hand side, a headered section where we'll do uh, maybe two by two, and we'll call this maybe critical dates. Because, because this has a lot of dates around it, um, we can <clears throat> separate that. And then, again, same exact thing we just did above. We'll, we'll set this to 90. 
and we can maybe start pulling some of these dates down. So using this drag and drop tool makes it really easy to then build your views out from, from that Excel document. Mm -hmm. Because start, starting from scratch, again, from the view designer, if I were to create a new view, it's essentially a blank screen. So again, it takes a lot longer to build from nothing than it does to manipulate you know, what we've had. So this is essentially what I just started with. And then I would start with um, you know, adding those same exact things like add a headered section onto this view um, and then have to add you know, all my tables of data where I would come over here into my, my attributes and maybe add some of those or add filters and things like that and embed those in here. So again, that, that ACE file tool, absolute game changer from, from uh, building this. Um, you know, once you have your ACE file pulled in and all the data, really the next few steps are manipulating your views. You know, you can spruce up the view and allow that, that view to be a, a more user-friendly interface. You can add colors, um, style sheets, things like that. We then do a, things like our mappings where we want to show, okay, th these are the documents that relate to this particular, um, this particular case information class where you can add doc types forms, folder types, and even create a drag and drop type interface. You know, when you drag a document onto this screen, what are you going to capture? Um, you can specify all of that right here within our app builder. Some of just, the data that you're showing might live in a system somewhere else. How would you connect that somewhere else into this um, into this uh, application? Is that an easy thing to do or difficult uh, to? Yeah, yeah, so there, well, two things there. One, you know, when we say this is an enterprise tool, I, I think A, our ability to connect to existing data that you have and the ability to, to leverage existing classes of data that you have within this, this own tool. So you'll see here, when I go to create a new class, it'll say, do you want to create a new class from scratch or use an existing class? So this is powerful as well. If you already have, let's say all of your employees listed on a separate table for another app that you've built, mm -hmm. you can leverage that for other applications. So I would just come here, find my employees class um, and maybe pull that. So we have some customers that are building applications that do nothing, that are doing nothing more than store tables of data. And then they're building sub apps that point to tables within that parent parent application. Okay. So okay. a good example is we have a large, large university um, and that university has all their courses, all their majors and minors, all their educators, all, all their facilities, all mapped out as tables of data in WorkView. And they're using, when they build new apps, they just leverage those existing tables of data uh, for perfect continuity across those. You're pulling the exact same table, uh, the exact same naming conventions and things like that. Well, that's that's a classic example of how to minimize IT sprawl, right? I mean, that's that's just a, a great example of how to how App Builder can assist in, in preventing that IT sprawl that, that we talked about very early on. So yeah, that's that's excellent example. Yeah, and so when you do that new class, and if you're going to use OnBase as your, your ability to store the class, we've got the standard class where OnBase would essentially be the database. We've got an example of an extension class. That means we don't have to lose our parent class. So a good exa great example here would be an applicant to an employee. When you hire someone, their name doesn't change, right? We, we still keep all that applicant info. We're just going to bolt on maybe employee ID, manager, role, things like that. that. That's an example of an extension class onto an applicant. Okay. Association classes, that's that one-to-many type relationship where we can say, you know, um, vendor X contract, where show me all my contracts with this particular vendor or show me this vendor and all the active contracts that we have with that person. The ability to cross dissect the data. And then lastly, like you mentioned, the external class. So, right, we're foolish to think we're going to store all this data. Um, if you already have an HRIS system, if you already have um, an ERP, if you already have, you know, those, those types of systems, we can tie into those. And here's those connection methods. We can use a linked or local server, an ODBC connection, 
we can run some scripts. Um, and again, I'm licensed for everything in my demo system, so I can essentially connect to, to essentially everything. Okay. If I were to do link to local server, you just need the database and the table name. Um, if you do an ODBC connection, you need the username and password to get into that table. That ODBC connection, what that allows us to do is write back to the database. So, you know, in the case that it's tough to create a front end for a user to, to interface with that data, um, OnBase can be the interface to write back to that database. So let me just show, you know, an app that is essentially, I don't want to call it finished, but just some, some apps that are in my demo system to show some examples of what I've been talking about. So here are some examples of filters. Uh, we talked about filters and how you would present that data. Mm -hmm. um, this is a new HR employee onboarding application. If you remember, I, we talked about constrained filters. This filter is constrained down to my specific username, you know, my system tasks. I don't have any work today, so that's nice. Um, we can have search filters. So here is your ability to search. And I selected that, you know, descendant name, date of birth, date of death. That's where those would be presented here. And again, you can even present these where I don't have to type in anything. I can just click search and here's every employee that you have in the system. So, and again, you'll see that this, the search results look a lot like an Excel document, right? This mm -hmm. is essentially columns and rows of data, um, but this is essentially on steroids. This allows me to search this and sort this at any time. So if I wanna search by last name or sort maybe by department, I take department, I drag it up top. There's every employee that you have in your system, you know, sorted by department. Uh, you know, we make it really easy to manipulate this data you can display it as a dashboard as well. So you can not only get this views and columns, but with a click of a button, there's every single, um, you know, here, th that might look a little better. There's all your departments that are currently hiring. And you can mm -hmm. see that, you know, HR is booming. And again, these are live dashboards. So when I click on engineering, there's my three employees that are being hired in engineering. So we make it really easy to, to manipulate this data. And let's go ahead and open up one of these screens. So here's all my employees that I'm looking to onboard. Here's an example of, you know, here's the employee information and we can create a checklist for each employee. So we're gonna actually create, you know, we're gonna add what they need based on their role type. And you'll see here that we've got multiple tabs here within this application where it doesn't always have to be on a single screen. You know, if that screen's gonna be really busy, um, it might, might make sense to separate this data. So that's essentially it. I mean, you can con continuously build these applications. Um, I can tell you, you know, it, the never ending part of app building is all the little bells and whistles you can add on these things. Um, you know, the example I just provided, the probate uh, case management, the customers that we talked to about that, they said, hey, you know, one thing that we is a challenge for us is actually collecting the asset information. So when we show up on an estate and we see all these assets, we're actually filling out just an Excel doc on our laptop and taking photos. And then when we get back, we have to try to evaluate those. Hmm. So they said, you know, it, does OnBase have anything for that? I said, absolutely. We can create a form for you to put on an iPad to walk into that estate with, and you're adding line item by line item with a photo and when you click save, you know, we can maybe automatically generate some some uh, some item amounts based on what that item is or the condition that you selected it in. You know, just the ability to capture that stuff on the fly rather than having to get back in the office and, and essentially just organize for an hour and relate photos back to a spreadsheet. Um, you know, that is not a good use of someone's time. I mean, literally, you could you have the app on the on the iPad <clears throat> and as you be open the case up. Um, you'd have a form and you type in some attribute about what the item is and then snap a picture of it. And you've inventoried that item and you could do that quickly without having to manually type all that into an Excel spreadsheet and then a separate camera to take a picture and then try and marry that all back at the office. Absolutely. And some other, you know, unique things, you just hit a nail on the head that we haven't even talked about, you know, our ability to leverage any of this data in multiple ways. We can use this data to index documents. So if I'm looking at someone's record and I drag maybe their I-9 onto the screen, we can 
have on base program to automatically capture that document. So mm -hmm. again, you'll see this is asking me to specify a doc, doc type and a doc type group. Well, if you actually specified those right here on this mapping document import screen, we could even lock that down to maybe HR documents. So you could only specify, you know, this is their I-9 or whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we make it really easy uh, to manage content with this drag and drop type of interface. But then one other part, we're using this data to index documents that we're going to pull into our application going forward. But we can essentially use them for anything. Um, if you're an existing OnBase customer, I'm sure you're familiar with the term autofill keyword set. Mm -hmm. Well, autofill keyword sets as of OnBase 17 can now point to a work view filter. So when I go to my, my autofill keyword set, let's find one here that's external. Here's an external autofill keyword. You would essentially point it to that work view filter. So here's where you would select, here's my app, you know, maybe our, our new one that we just built um, for uh, the probate. Oh, maybe we didn't click save on it, but either way, you know, just being able to select your filter right there, mm -hmm. it's pretty seamless. It makes it very, very easy to manage your autofill keyword sets using work view tables instead of our rigid, you know, old school version of autofill keywords. In a conversation prior, you and I had talked about the Family Medical Leave Act as, a, as an application you saw kind of as a common uh, need out in the marketplace. Could you talk about that one real quick? Absolutely, yeah. So what we see is a lot of folks might be using an HRIS system um, like PeopleSoft and or, you know, there's a bunch out there. Um, but you know, PeopleSoft in particular, we see customers that they'll deploy it and then customize it to the point where they can't get the latest and greatest from PeopleSoft. You know, they've wanted to add on this FMLA tracking, but they can't because their system's too customized or doesn't allow for it or whatever that might be. Or maybe you're a smaller customer and you're using a small homegrown HRIS system or a, a small hosted version and you don't have a need for it today. But as the future changes, you know, you do want to track FMLA leave in a better way than a spreadsheet. Here's a perfect example of a really easy relational database. You know, we have our employee information, mm -hmm. um, all the different details on FMLA, you know, hours used, hours left. So one thing we didn't talk about are triggers. You know, triggers are essentially those custom actions where hours, you know, total hours can be calculated where we're just gonna do a, a addition or subtracting, addition or subtraction between other attributes. But here's essentially all the details on FMLA uh, that we would collect. And again, it relates back to an employee. Um, here's the notes that we're going to keep track of, any tasks that we're going to assign internally. But this is a very, very simple way to start an FMLA tracking application. Um, you know, some other components here, you know, your employees, uh, this might be an external class where we're going to tie this into, you know, that, that third-party system that you're using today, where the name, email, department, and ID are going to be auto populated. Um, and then this would essentially be your workspace. So I think I've actually already pulled this app in. Let's take a look here. No, I don't see it up there. So, you know, FMLA leave, we can come up here. I, I think I did pull it into my system. Oh, no, I actually just deleted them both. So here. Okay. So that same exact file we were just looking at. Yeah. We'll add our user group. And this, you know, uh, the view for this in particular, I put two different sections on the view. Um, and again, I'm specifying those sections right on this. Basically, I have my employee information as a separate little box at the bottom from all my tracking field sections. So here is my FMLA leave view that we built with all those attributes and two different sections. And again, this might be a great example of a, an app that you would have a critical dates where you're going to have mm -hmm. all those dates, you know, tracked on a separate separate in, uh, level yep. there. Okay. Yep. Got a request date. Got a leave reason. Um, got a certain amount of time you want to respond. Um, you know, tracking the hours. Um, yep. It's all good. Yeah, just the way this is all laid out, again, you, you would move some things around just to make it a little bit more visually appealing. But again, changing it from here is really, really simple. Mm -hmm. um, you know, changing colors, if you wanted to put a background color or something on some of these, um, no problem at all.
Okay. All right, Jim. Hey, this was uh, extremely helpful. Um, you know, uh, takeaway from this, uh, ACE obviously just really dramatically improves the, uh, I mean, it already is rapid application development, but now you add the ACE to it. And uh, as you said, you can get up to a 10 times saving, savings, uh, you know, from, from concept to uh, time to market. I mean, that's incredible. And this really illustrates in your demo how that's achieved. Um, any other takeaways you want to leave um, our viewers and listeners with? First of all, if they're an existing OnBase customer and they come across something where they want to see how this might work for them and they have a spreadsheet or a use case, absolutely fire us an email at that email I provided, ABC at Highland, or engage with Paul and the team at um, IDT. We're happy to help you guys and walk through maybe we'll help you create that first ACE file and show you how you can pull it in and, and whip it up and, and make it better. Um, so first of all, engage with our team. We're happy to help and just stay informed. I mean, our team, we're putting together a lot of different versions of this. We've got more ACE files that we're producing from a, a plug-in standpoint. Um, so I encourage you guys, if you've never used the tool, um, you know, uh, engage with IDT. You can reach out for something like an eval license where you can, uh, you know, learn to play around with it. You can start with those ACE file tools. It's easier now than ever to get your feet wet with app building um, than ever before. All right. Well, Jim, I, I uh, again appreciate your time uh, giving us an overview of ACE and rapid application development from Highland. And uh, uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure we'll touch base again in the near future on this subject to see how things are continuing to improve to make this experience even better. I don't know how much better it could get. I mean, this is, this is quite incredible. So um, thank you for your time and thank you for the explanation, the demo overview, and uh, we'll wrap it up. You are welcome, sir. Have a great day. All right. You too. Thank you, Jim.